Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, my name is Tammy Phelps. I am, and my husband Jim, are the founders of Capital City React. Uh, we are very proud that we are not normal. We are very abnormal. Um, we do things from a very contrarian standpoint. Uh, we don't do things like everybody else out there does that, and I'm very proud of it. We are on the street, in the trenches, every day, changing lives, building communities, and making a difference in the lives of the people that we touch in our communities and here at Capital City Ria. So when I share with you that, you know, last night at nine o'clock I was showing free homes and writing a lease, and I was getting them turned on this morning, we were getting utilities dealt, or utilities dealt with, and we were taking photographs of trash that had been sitting for more than 24 hours on one of our residents' decks, and Jim ran down to Ocean City, Maryland this morning to do a bank run and a bank drop for me uh, so that I could get up here earlier today, and then we each drove in three hours one way to be here, and then we'll turn around and drive back down to the Eastern Shore because I had two units that were trying to get turned over. We lived the life. So we know what it takes to make this happen. And Capital City RIA was created because as an investor, I got so sick and tired of sitting in the seats and being pitched. <coughs> I got tired of it. What's on your credit card? How many sales can we get at the back of the room? I got sick of it. But at the same time, there was a lot of value in you know the product and in the information that I bought. But what I found was, is that real estate is local. It is global, it is international. Um, but real estate for us is local. And you have to lo know your local market. So sitting in a RIA where a national speaker flies in every single month, sells something in the back of the room, gets on a plane, flies back to Utah or California, wherever it is that they go to, and you have a product that has pieces missing, and you can't figure out um, what piece is missing, so you get on the phone, and they tell you to email them your question. Meanwhile, you've got a deal that you're gonna lose because you can't get somebody to see it. Well, our students um, know, for example, I mean, they can call me and I'll, I'll drive in. Where's John? John stepped out. Um, John Dewey and I were literally back and forth all day today. He's working on a three single unit portfolio that I helped him put together in Baltimore. and. Friday, uh, Tuesday um, at 10 a.m., I will be on site with him doing property inspections. And then at one o'clock p.m., I will be sitting in the bank president's office with him um, so he can learn this process of speaking to bankers, doing his home inspections. All to me, who is sitting right here in the front, uh, this coming Friday morning at 9 a.m., our property inspector is meeting us on site. She has a six unit under contract. Um, and we're getting ready to, tomorrow, we're getting ready to start due diligence of phase one financials. Uh, so she and I will be working tomorrow on phase one financials, um, literally step by step by step. So I got tired of not getting support. I'm a visual learner, I've got to be in the field, I gotta touch it, I need to know how and why. So Capital City Rio was created for the personal growth and the business development of the real estate entrepreneur. Because if you're not good in here, I don't care what you do out there, there's gonna be chaos. I'm not saying we all have to be saints and spiritual and kumbaya and namaste and that life's gotta be good. But if you have a lot of chaos going on in your life, I assure you it will affect you on the outside. So we spend a lot of time at Capital City Rio really making sure that you're in a good place in your life. And we are about creating wealth. We're not about getting rich, okay? We are about creating wealth so you can be financially free to do the things you wanna do, to leave the legacies, build the communities, and create the things that you want in your life. We have a very different mindset in how we do that. I love rehabbing, I love flipping. We do it every day in all of our communities. Uh, we do multiples at a time. However, I realized many years ago that if I'm gonna spend the same amount of time and energy on a daily basis looking for one single family home to wholesale or to flip, why wouldn't I want to spend the exact same amount of time and energy looking for a multi-unit that could provide me with passive income and cash flow and feed me for the rest of my life? But I wasn't taught it. Um, I didn't understand it. I quit school in the 10th grade. School needed me. I did not need school. So, um, you know, my, my story, my life uh, is extraordinary. Um, 
as I said, I quit school in the 10th grade and I never went back. I was pregnant at 16, pregnant at 17. Both of our children are now 29 and 30, active duty military, special forces. They're over in the sand. Um, our daughter's a captain with EOD. Love my military. My kids are amazing. Um, and you know, life is good. My husband and I now own, manage, and control 400 units. Um, but we came from nothing. Um, 20 years ago, I was hit by a drunk we left for dead, left paralyzed. So I have no feeling in my right leg. 21 surgeries later, I uh, lost my home, lost my career. Uh, I lost everything, not once, I lost it twice. So when I tell you that I understand and I get it, I do. Two and a half years ago, my husband and I purged 75% of all of our material possessions. We are selling our house as we speak. We decided to move on site on the eastern shore of Maryland into one of our mobile home communities that we own down there. We own three that we are repositioning and stabilizing. So as of today, I live in a trailer park. I have trailer park trash. I have a three bedroom, two bath, uh, mobile home. Uh, that uh, it, we bought for 900,000, it's now worth 2.4 million. Uh, we, so we are on site. Uh, we're there living on site, doing stabilization and repositioning, uh, building a community. Um, it's not a trailer park, it's a mobile home community and it is bad to the bone, this is what we do. So um, I love where I'm at, because I've realized it's not about the big houses, it's not about the material possessions, it's about the lives that we change each and every day. And so when you come from life and you become a real estate investor and you learn that it's not about being rich, it's not about doing deals, but it's about making a difference in the lives of people, God, the universe, and the great divine, I don't care what you believe in, will bless you abundantly over and over and over again. And we are blessed. We are very blessed. This is who we are at Capital City React. So tonight, it's really fun because there is no national speaker. And if you thought a national speaker was going to be here to sell you on some big multi-unit course, I apologize if I let you down. If you need to leave, that's cool. Um, you have none other than me uh, and my husband's input um, this evening. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Real world, real life, right? Um, after this evening, um, 10 o'clock-ish, um, someone from our team will go over to Joe Theismann's. We do Night Owls Networking, and please feel free to join us. For those of us that are Night Owls, you're more than welcome to come to Joe Theismann's, get a, uh, a meal, an appetizer, a beverage, whatever it is you want. You don't have to come. Um, we are not uh, paying the bill for everybody there, so you have to buy your own, but it's a really great, um, fun time where we sit down and network and get to know each other a little bit more. So how many of you have been to Night Owls? It's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's just it's a whole nother level of a um, whole nother level of, of conversation. So last month we had a, a contest and said please go take a photo of the new uh, I am unmessable with bracelets. Um, and failure isn't an option. Post it to any social media channel with hashtag CCRiaFan and um, we will win big, we will choose someone, and we got this in. Jim, are you here? I don't know if Jim was gonna be here tonight. Okay, so we will let Jim know, but he's literally sitting on um, heavy equipment, working, and um, literally snapped a photo of the Capital City Ria, and I just thought that was so, so cool. So. Uh, Jim will, we will um, honor him on social media, let him know he's the winner. Um, and he's actually gonna get uh, two tickets to our upcoming August 5th and August 6th two day big workshop uh, that we got coming up. So today we decided um, to have another fun um, contest. Where's Olga? Right here. Olga, what was our, what did we decide? I already forgot. What was our contest for today? Yeah. Uh, well, same thing. You need the photos, uh, okay. Let, why, like, let's do this. I remember now. I remember. I remember. We said for the next 24 hours. This was a week. We said for the next 24 hours only. So from tonight, 
You can take a photo in the room at an event with somebody, you can do a selfie. It has to be real estate related though. I don't wanna see Snickers, you know, your poodle, like it has to be real estate related. Maybe you're on site tomorrow, meeting your general contractor, take a photo, whatever it is. 24 hours and you post hashtag CC Ria fan, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we're having a lot of fun with this. And we will choose a winner tomorrow night. Uh, literally, we'll choose a winner tomorrow night for the coolest, funnest um, post that gets posted out there. And you also will receive two tickets to August uh, 5th and August 6th two-day workshop, which is a bus tour, catered lunch, we have VIP. This is gonna be a really big deal. So um, don't do it right now. <laughs> um, Olga's holding up um, a blue nautical bucket. That's where the bracelets are. I have to tell you, she, she said, Timmy, why don't we get those? And I'm like, are you serious? I don't know if I want to run around with rubber bracelets on again. I haven't had rubber bracelets on in a really long time. I just want to share with you guys that these rubber bracelets right here have been on my arm now for a month. And I won't take them off. Because every day, Anybody else one over I look at my favorite quote, my, my favorite and that is, I am unmessable with. The white ones say, I am unmessable with. The blue one says, failure isn't an option. Every day, I am looking right here. And it is a constant reminder to me that I am powerful. I am unmessable with. I got this. I'm doing this. And that failure isn't an option. I will not be defeated, even if I have a bad day. Thank you, Olga, because I did not realize how much these were going to mean to me, and I almost didn't, you know, buy a whole bunch of them uh, for everybody. I ended up buying them for the expo. So I, I'm totally digging these, and um, really, really, really loving the fact that I, I get that little inspiration and motivation every day. So I'd love to be able to share that with you, and know that every day, if you just got a tough phone call, um, that you're looking down and going, you know what? Thank you, Tammy. I am a muscle boy. So, fun, fun. All right, so, um, this is the most fun time, funnest time for me. And, just one announcement. We're running low on seats, so if we have any seats that aren't being used, then people are just ordering. There's three seats up here in the front, there's two seats here. All right, as you know, as a real estate investor, we have a tendency to focus on what we have not yet done. Do we not? Yes. Oh my God, I didn't get this done. Oh my God, I still got to get this done. Oh my God, I've got to do this. I got to do this. We forget to acknowledge and celebrate the small successes and the big successes of what we have done and how far we have come. So, Howard, you shared with me that you have a closing coming up, correct? Yes. But it was like, eh, like, hey. <laughs> and I said, can we share? And he was like, eh, well. I said, please, we need to celebrate. We need to honor you and all that you've created and all that you've accomplished. Going to settlement is huge. So would you guys give it up big time, Captain Peter, yourself. So. If you want to turn around right there to lean on the chair. So you have, would, that, would that feel better for you? Yeah, that's fine. So you take this. So I don't know anything about this. All I know is that we're celebrating his success because apparently he's going to settlement. What are we going to settlement on? We're going to settlement on a home, single family home that was uh, put up for sale in um, Prince Edward, White Flint, Maryland. In um, Southern Maryland, near Leonardtown, that area. Okay. Um, the house was put up and it was under contract in three days. Oh, right. And to me, I'm very particular about presentation. 
presentation is everything. And I personally go in, do the photographs, do whatever I need to make sure that's done. And then I put it out on, on uh, MLS or wherever I need to. So you are a realtor? Yes. And you are the listing agent representing the seller? Yes. Can I see? And you're with Exit Realty? Exit Deluxe Realty in Chevy Chase and Davis Road. And that shows very nice. And it went under contract in three days? Yes. Wow. That is very, very nice. I think that is an amazing thing to celebrate, don't you guys? ladies are sisters. I will not tell you which one's older and which one's younger. <laughs> That's up to you. They've been in the Capital City RIA um, Inner Circle program, which is multi-unit. Um, and we've looked at singles, we've looked at some small multis, we've been all over, right? And when did the kids come? Um, okay, so the end of February, oh, well, before that, Altamis um, was turning her private residence, which is where? Upper Marlboro. Upper Marlboro into an, a private assisted living home, okay? And uh, in doing that, life completely stopped her in an instant. Um, her children are grown, correct? Everybody's left yeah. a mess. And uh, all of a sudden, she uh, got a phone call, maybe a couple phone calls, and the next thing I knew is that she was on her way to the airport to pick up not one, not two, not three, not four, five grandchildren. Wow. Oh, and it's two true. Oh. And two in diapers mm. yeah. that she has full custody over, that she is now taking care of. So she went from being a grandmother, I mean, she went from being a mom and, and a grandmother to back being a grandmother, but a mom. She had to give up her dream of her assisted living home, temporarily, but now the babies are there full time. And we have had lunch and said, this is temporary, and we would get through this. And now she's in adjustment mode, right? And she's learning how to make it work and she's got a garden out back. And I said, when the time is right, the opportunity will show up, right? It will. They each do their own thing, but I also knew if something really cool came along that I could pull them together because I know both of them. So Altamese never ever, um, went into recovery as a real estate addict and was constantly looking online for that deal, right? That next fix, that next deal. And so found one and she goes, Tammy, Tammy, call me, call me. I think I found one, I think I found one. And I said, okay, what is it? She said, it's a four unit, but the seller's gonna take it to a six unit, but it's occupied and it's this price. And I said, cool, tie it up, let's go see it. So uh, last week we went met the agent. We, we went to go see it. Yeah. Uh, decided to tie it up. So yeah. she's got it tied up, um, and it'll be a six unit that is under contract for 150. But we're going to take it down to probably 125 where it needs to be. Um, yes. And to Friday morning at 9 a.m. we're meeting the home inspector to do. Um, on-site due diligence and a site visit uh, for this property. But her question was, I really want to do this, but I don't know how I can do it alone. So we talked about how, how can this be, right? So many times we will stop right there because we can't get past the next step. The next step right. And it paralyzes us. This is exactly what we're talking about, April. Literally, you'll stop. And I said, no, we, we have to find a way. I said, why don't you and Arlene take this on together? I said, wouldn't it be nice to have a little bit of something, something, and nothing, and nothing? You know, 
on the first multi-unit acquisition, why not just go in together? You know, each of them bring different skills or talents or strengths to this. They're sisters. Um, I said, why don't you talk to your sister? I didn't know if it was a love-hate relationship. I mean, I knew because I knew they, I knew their relationship. I just didn't know if they would truly want to be in business together. I said, talk to your sister. See, see if you know. Let's do one. Let's right. let's see how it goes. Right? If you don't like it, you don't like it. So it is tied up, and it is under contract. And I said, I need you. She's like, what do I do next? What do I do next? I said, go get the numbers. Go get the financials. Go get the rent rolls. Just go get them. Right. And she did. Have and now we have them, and tomorrow we're going to analyze them, and we're going to go over them, and we're going to see what the numbers look like. But neither of us, any of us, are freaking out about what it is. I don't care what it is. If it doesn't work, we back out. Yeah. But we'll know what the numbers are tomorrow. Right. And if the numbers look really good, and as good as we think, then we will uh, head full steam ahead Friday morning at 9 a.m. for the on site inspection, which will probably take three to four hours. <coughs> And from there, we'll then decide what we're going to do. Are we going to come back for a per door repair credit? Which I already know we're going to do because she got, may I share? Yeah. It's about being honest, right? Yeah. yeah. In yeah. her excitement, in her excitement, and I, we see this all the time, she got yeah. too excited and thought she should put an offer in before her and I discussed what the offer should be. And she put in an offer that was too high. And do you think the seller accepted it? Yeah. Right away. Right away. Like, no negotiations at all. So I get the call after the fact. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. So I said, okay, our saving grace is a house. It does need work. It does. It definitely needs work. Um, but it is, four units are occupied. So we're, I have said to her, what do you want to do? Uh, she said, I want to, we want to move forward. So we are going to, be very, very diligent with the numbers and the repairs and what this needs. Um, but this is an opportunity when life gets thrown at you um, to say, is it the most ideal situation? No, but you're making it work. Right. And now this is an opportunity for both of you to own a multi-unit, to learn the system, right. to learn the process, to get the wind under your wings. And then once you get that wind under your wings, then what happens? You have to fly. I'll fly with you a little bit more. <laughs> 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 right. That this it's it's just it's awesome, isn't it? It it's is fun. Are you nervous? Um a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. What are you nervous about? Um just going through the process. But I understand. Unknowns. Yeah, just unknowns. Are you nervous? No. Because <laughs> you've purchased Couple homes before that, not multi units, though, yeah. right? Okay. I said just tired of being nervous. I'm tired of being nervous. I'm tired of being nervous. So you're just sick and tired and tired of being nervous? Yeah. I'll you're like, just let's go. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So I am so excited for where they are, and that even though life got in the way, even though she got, you know, um, a little bog of down with five little ones, um, you're, you're my hero. You know. And it's just really awesome to know that you have sacrificed so much of your life for the bear babies. And yet you never gave up on your dream. And we will open the doors to the assisted living. It may take us a little bit longer, but we will get them doors open. And being a veteran, we're gonna tap into the VA loan, we're gonna yeah. get you another home, we're gonna, you know what I mean? We got the plan. It's gonna take some time. Yeah. But you are my hero. Because you didn't have to take them kids. Appreciate you earning. Thank, thank you for supporting her and going through this. This is the kind of fun stuff we do, right? Yes. yes thank awesome. You. you are so welcome. So success is huge. We have to celebrate. Any other amazing success, settlements, awesomeness, Bob. So I did my first rehab, I bought it in April, and so Friday, uh, we finally closed, the settlement closed, and I got my check for oh. the first rehab that we did. Nice. And then on, on Monday, I got another uh, contract, and then again today, I got another contract. Right. So I got two contracts, Monday and Wednesday this week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the second one's kind of cool, 
because it's a subject to. When I'm walking through a subject to on my second one, so. Now it's when it gets really fun. Yeah. How much was the check? Uh, we're going to clear about 45. That's all? That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so you bought it in April, because I, I don't remember when you bought it. Because we got them celebrated the success. Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember? Yeah. Let's talk about this. Yeah. And you were on time and on budget, right? Yeah. I mean, or were we you? were in April and uh, Friday was three months. We were in and out. So you're in and out in 90 days. Yes, ma'am. And on the market, did you stage it? Yes. Did you list it with a licensed realtor? Yes. And what did you put it back on the market for? It went on for four sixty-five. And what? How many days did it go under contract? We put it on Friday and had two offers by Monday. And did it go over ask? Yeah, we put the price over ask, and then we did a seller credit, so we netted back the listing. Okay. Then, okay. So the tricky thing about the whole deal was that buyer a couple weeks later backed out. And then I had to, I remember you then I had to relist it. So the day I relisted it, within like, I had like multiple offers again within like another two days on the relist. Wow. The, the multiple uh, offers in the relist, now that you've been through the process, what do you attribute it to? Was it location? Was it price? Was it condition? Was it all of the above? Or was it the market? Well, I think it was a stable market, but I think it was a nice neighborhood. The job that we did, it was, it was uh, top level, top level uh, condition. The work that we did was very, very high quality work. Uh, you know, the open floor concepts, granite, uh, pile hardwood, and, and all of that. But then we staged it, did professional photos, and did a professional marketing of the thing. I think, I think that was the key right there. Yeah. Stay, staging, yeah. well, where are all, all my realtors? What, what is the percentage uh, for staging, in it, in it, like literally, like five to seven percent higher, you most most of the time you will see on a home when it is professionally staged. Is that about right? Yeah, staging is just it's huge. Congratulations! Wow, I want to give you a hug. I can't reach really there. But that is awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, I want to get to the good stuff. But if there are successes out there that we didn't get to acknowledge. I acknowledge you. Please make sure you celebrate. You to to me, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not a long hair. Yes. Also. Uh, also. <laughs> well, I don't know, should we? No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep them for the weekend? Yeah. Can I keep you for the weekend? <clears throat> or are you going to be really bummed out if you don't come up tonight, Chuck? <laughs> come on. We can, you can share again on the weekend. Sorry. So Igor is in, um, just joined actually uh, Inner Circle, a ton of experience on rehabbing. And when he came, he said, Tammy, I have rehab a lot of properties in the Baltimore area, and I do not want to leave this world without having done a DC property from start to finish. I want to experience DCRA. I don't care if it's a condo conversion. I have to get through DC, and I said, why? <laughs> but is it about me? No, it doesn't matter. So literally two weeks later, he, he's hit me up late at night, and he says, Tammy, Tammy, Tammy. He's like, oh my God, I got, I got one under contract. And I'm like, got what? And he's like, a DC property, because he put it out there to the universe. So um, this is really, really, really freaking cool. So he's now stepped into what you asked for. Yes. So what did you ask for? I asked, for, well, uh, just about a little bit about me. She mentioned Baltimore. I did Baltimore counts, Baltimore City. I did the majority of the stuff late, uh, recently in PG County. I rehabbed about 85 properties in my entire career, um, which is not a lot. I mean, it's not a lot compared to other people, but it is enough to have some experience. And then the market happens. Uh, most of my stuff was residential, and uh, uh, I was always afraid of doing DC stuff. It was something that was, for me, um, unattainable in the regards to how complicit it is, how what needs to be done to do it right and not make mistakes and losing the money, because that has been done before, losing the money. Um, so about eight 
months ago, I completely froze my business. Uh, I did not buy a single house since it's probably December of last year uh, because my whole entire uh, purchases were based on MLS and MLS froze ultimately. And um, I decided to that I need to turn around and do the direct marketing and all of that stuff in order to buy better and have better margins. Uh, but that this time that I decided to kind of step back from routine of doing stuff right. over and over and over again. It became a job. Became a job and just do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And I decided to do more of a quality than a quantity. And obviously it hit me, where, where, where do I find that type of properties for, for, with bigger margins that would be obviously DC. But simultaneously he realized yes. flipping at that yeah, level was what I said earlier, it became a job. Right. And it, it was losing its appeal. And he said, there's got to be a way for me to create passive income, yes. you know, for my family. Absolutely. But I still want to flip. I love to flip. And I said, great, we can do both. So that's, we're, we're mind shifting. What, what is amazing to me is that, it, and it humors me that he thinks that his homes in Baltimore were not a high enough quality, right? Did you guys hear him say that he has to do DC because mm -hmm. the quality? He has something in his mind, and it doesn't matter what it is, by the way. He has something in him as an investor that he has got to accomplish DC. And I did, I said, why? But right now, the most important thing to him, and for me as a coach and a mentor, is to push him into that and make him experience that because if he doesn't experience a rehab in DC, is he gonna be good in here? No. 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 Does he really need to do another 90th rehab in DC? No. He, but he wants to, right? And it wouldn't be fair if I tried to talk him out of that. That makes no sense. He wants to experience a high-end, high-level renovation, and in his mind, DC is extremely challenging. All markets are challenging. It, it, it doesn't matter. So it's really exciting. So now he's got this phenomenal property in Wood, Woodridge, Woodridge? Woodridge. 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 Yeah, um, yeah, Woodridge area, Northeast, and I picked up that property from wholesaler. It's, listen to these numbers. The numbers are purchase price 370. 370,000. We're probably going to be at 160 to $280,000 we have. And we're looking at the conservative 710, probably maybe 770. So he, he, knows, he knows what he could get, but he estimates on what conservative. So at the end of the day, I just asked him, he hasn't even started thinking profit yet, but he, you know, cause we don't think as much profit as this is, this isn't as much profit for him that this is the challenge. Do you guys see this? Mm -hmm. This property right? is, as far as I'm concerned, which is gonna sound very strange, as far as I'm concerned, it's not about the money. I can make 50 grand or 40 on this property. I mean, this is, and I know it's amount of work and it's gonna be six or seven months. As far as I'm concerned in this property, this is an experience. And if I'm gonna go through that, this is a, I have to completely rebuild the second floor, turn it from two one to three two. It's a major renovation. So he's, as an investor, we don't stop and think about this, that to challenge ourselves, right? right that's what he's stepping into. He's challenging himself to think at a different level, to play at a different level. He's gotta play with architects, he's gotta play, you know, with DCRA, he's got to play with a structural engineer. This is a whole totally different sandbox. But the profit you're looking at ballpark is what? Would you say 150? 150. Probably about 150,000 dollars profit. 150 to 190. You know, which it is nice, but when you have to emotionally engage at that level and go through what he's going to go through, if he was making a 40 or 50,000 dollar profit. As a coach, I would step in and said, "No, you're not going to do the deal because now I'm not. You're not going to take on that much to do a forty thousand dollars profit. That's insane." Okay, so I wanted to share that with you guys because again, we think very differently here, 
And it is so important for him in his growth yeah. as an investor to overcome this DC thing that he's got. But I'm gonna be right there beside him. I just wanted to share something. I just passed the opportunity to take a $700,000 uh, property, which we turned into 1.2 to 1.3. The only reason I actually passed on that is because I thought to myself that I was not gonna be able to handle that. I need to start from the, something in the lower end. And that's a game. And it's a game. Yeah, yeah. that, that it's, that's it's a, a game. Large, it's a large game, and uh, it was a very solid neighborhood, but just to, just to share. It's a pleasure being on the journey, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a rehab mastermind. We're gonna do a rehab mastermind. I've got to, I've got to get on. I, yeah. I, I have shared nothing. <laughs> so it's been all celebration, which is a lot of fun. Um, are you going to Night House? I will. I'll okay, so fun. we'll let's share at Night House. So really, really cool, fun stuff, guys. Um, let's get to the meat and potatoes. Um, August 5th and 6th, we have a two-day event coming up. Uh, this is for multi-unit total immersion, two days on site. We're bringing in the luxury charter buses. Um, Lunch will be provided, we have VIP. This is where we're gonna truly get down and dirty with the analyzers and the pro formas and the rent rolls so that you guys can truly see and understand um, multi-unit. So, Jim and I started, um, well I started 20 years ago, but he and I started uh, this journey together um, about 17 and a half years ago, we were flipping single family. And I had heard of passive income. Um, I kind of thought I knew what it was, but I didn't really. And I wasn't worthy enough um, to own wealth, to have wealth, or to have multi unit. So in my mind, um, the ability of me to be wealthy was completely unattainable. I was the kid who quit high school in the 10th grade. I was the pregnant, unwed teenage mother at 16. I was the failure, the screw up. You're never gonna amount to anything in life. That's me. And now I'm married to the most extraordinary life partner. And I went to my high school reunion once um, me just for shits and giggles because I now have more. Oh, I have two microphones. <laughs> um, I now have more, own more, control more, experience more, see more, and do more than anybody that I went to high school with. So I was able to prove to myself that I didn't need school. I'm not an advocate to any child to say don't go to school. It didn't work for me. It just didn't. Um, I'm a visionary and I'm an entrepreneur. And school tries to put people in a box. And I don't fit in a box. Um, I fly at a 60,000 foot view. And I see things that other people don't see that they can't see. I feel things that other people can't feel and don't feel. And I am so proud and honored to be married to the most extraordinary man. Uh, we own a beautiful 25,000 square foot apartment building in Baltimore that we totally got renovated. Um, we bought it. Uh, as a wholesale, um, when the market crashed, everybody said, you're crazy, you're gonna get shot, I can't believe you're going into that area. Um, but we did. Um, we paid 375,000 for that. It was a $25,000 wholesale fee to the late and great Kenny Gills, um, who wholesaled the bill to me, if any of you know Kenny Gills, he passed away suddenly at a very young age. Um, that property appraised uh, recently for 2.4 million, um, but I saw the vision and no one else could. They thought I was insane, you're nuts, what are you doing, you're gonna get shot, I can't believe you. I did my research economically and statistically, I knew Baltimore City for Martin Luther King Boulevard was gonna push, and it was gonna take a couple years. Um, we get asked all the time to buy our building um, and I won't let it go. Um, that building right now uh, brings in about 22000 a month, runs on about 27% operating expenses um, because my husband taught me that you do it right the first time. You do your repairs and maintenance right the first time. 
I didn't let him know that we also were getting ready to buy an 85 unit mobile home community just outside of Greensboro, North Carolina. I let him know we bought something after uh, we bought it. Um, <laughs> so then we bought a 100 unit, um, well, 55 and a 20 unit, and then another 18 unit down on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. That's where we are now, doing a reposition there. And um, it was 168 units on, or 140 units on 60, eight acres in Fort Mitchell, Alabama, right outside the back gate of Fort Benning. Um, I actually stepped back in management of that one. It's too far, it's just too far. I was like, oh, I'll go where the money is, I'll go where the deal is. No, mm -mm. no, if I can't get to it in five hours in my car, no. I don't need to go across the Mississippi anymore. I don't need that. So most recently, um, a year ago, I got a phone call about another wholesale uh, in Pikesville, Maryland, right off of Reister's Town Road in an area called Sudbrook Gardens, and uh, it was an assisted living, residential assisted living that I had always dreamed of being able to own, but I don't know anything about assisted living other than it's a home residentially where old people live, and old is subjective, but I knew it was really cool, and it's something I always wanted to do, and I knew the numbers were crazy. So without telling my husband, um, Old January a year ago, I went up and took a look at it, and it was um, 585,000. I negotiated it down to 525,000, and before we closed on it, the appraisal was at 2.4. Um, it is on the Federal Historic Reserve. We're getting ready to do a $400,000 renovation on it. It's pretty extraordinary. Uh, we're only a year and 12 months behind, um, <laughs> but I jumped. And I'm glad I jumped, because not only get offers every week to buy the property, but we're getting ready to do the renovation on it. But I didn't know anything about assisted living. I jumped. I'm now certified as an assisted living manager. Um, but this is what I want to share with you guys. I'm out there every day making this happen. I don't care if you don't know how to rehab. I don't care if you don't know anything about multi-unit. I don't care if you don't know how to operate and manage an assisted living. I didn't either. But if you don't jump now, and take the opportunity and know that there's clauses to get out and you don't surround yourself with a really powerful team, you're never going to do this, never. Take the shot now, jump. Learn along the way, surround yourself with a powerful team. So it's really, really cool. But the best part is, in May, I had a phone call from my GC and he goes, Tim, 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 I had this really hot deal over by Hopkins and I'm like, well, what's going on? He's like, you know, this is the hottest market in Baltimore right now. You know, we're picking stuff up for 5,000, 10,000, 50,000. He goes, the ARV's only saying they're climbing, man. He's like, 250, 260, 280. He's like, damn you, my God, they're up to 320, 330. I said, I want one, I want one. And um, I again did not tell my husband. So um, he called me, he goes, Tammy, 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 you gotta get over to Bond. You gotta meet me over there right now. Went over to North Bond um, and I learned that they owed 30, 35,000 on the property. 85 year old grandmother lives right next door. So two homes. She decided she was absolutely sick and tired of what it, her kids taking advantage of her. So I said, well, the property's gonna need about 150,000 to full gut rehab. Um, and I knew Karim, you know, was gonna do it. So I said, um, let's get the property tied up. Okay, let's get the paperwork done. So we did, we went to the granddaughter's office, because uh, granddaughter's on title, to sign the contract. While we were in the granddaughter's office signing the contract, um, I said, I don't know what the exact loan amount is. They agreed to sell their finance. Um, and they were already eight months behind. So I said, look, I'm gonna be making these mortgage payments, gonna help you know, bring you, bring you back current and help to restore some of your credit. And uh, she goes, well, let me call the mortgage company. So she calls the mortgage company, gets on the phone with the mortgage company while I'm sitting in her office in downtown Baltimore. And as the mortgage company answers the phone, they said, ma'am, I don't know if you realize, but you've been approved for a loan modification. Are you interested? And she looks at me and I looked at her and the grandmother's looking at me and I'm like, yeah, take it. <laughs> so, her, I mean, her payment was only $500 a month at that point. So I know if we did a loan modification, we got it down to like 200 a month, like that was really gonna be cool, and it did. 
So I was able to run, literally, I ran to the car so fast that day, I grabbed my credit card, I said, can I, she goes, you have to, you have to make the next three payments on time. This is to the seller. You have to make the next three payments on time, and then we will do a full modification for you, and that'll drop the payments down to 236 a month. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can do that. So I was like, I'll be right back. I beehived out to my car, grabbed my credit card, came back in, I said, stop, stop, stop. I said, ask her if I can pay the next three months right now with credit card. She said, man, will you take a credit card right now for the next three months? She goes, yeah. So I paid literally the next three months right there with a credit card, got the confirmation number. Um, we ratified the contract right then and there on the spot. I just bought a $330,000 ARV house with a credit card for $886. Yes. <laughs> no, he has to be, no. Oh, no, oh, we have the video. You can see the video. Eight hundred, eight hundred eighty-six dollars And I'm not, I'm not, we don't really do single family rehabbing anymore. As an investor, when an opportunity presents itself, do you jump? Yes. Did I know it, in that moment it was going to happen that way? No. I didn't. I thought it was just going to be a seller finance deal where she was eight months behind for thirty-five thousand. Okay, and um, we literally set up settlement. And my attorney, I paid my attorney to drive into Baltimore because she's eighty-five, so she didn't have to go to D.C. My attorney comes in. It's one of those days a week and a half ago. It's ninety-seven degrees, like it's stifling hot. I'm standing outside in the parking lot with my attorney and the grandmother and the granddaughter refuses to come out. And she's on title. And we stand there for two hours. Oh. We didn't settle. And my attorney drove all the way in. Anybody ever got up to the 11th hour and the 59th minute for a settlement and it didn't occur? Happens. Don't think just because it's not done that it's not done. It's not done. The granddaughter decided she was gonna change the rules. I was like, oh no, 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 no. So she goes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, oh no, 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 no. This is cause specific performance. You failed to perform based on this contract. My attorney is drafting the papers as we speak. I will sue you, okay, I will. So I let it go. It's been one week. My phone blew up yesterday from the grandmother, blew up because on top of it all, I agreed out of the goodness of my own heart to put $10,000 cash in the grandmother's pocket. Okay? She wants that $10,000 because she's never had $10,000 cash at 85 years old. She has never held $10,000 cash in her hands. I want her to experience that. She's looking at losing that. She is so furious with her granddaughter, but the granddaughter has to sign the paperwork. Called me yesterday, texted me yesterday, and called me back again today. I finally texted her. I said, you know, look, I, I'm busy. I'll give you a call if I can. I, I'm not desperate at this point. I'm just going to take you down. You don't play games. We're, you know, I've already spent too much time. My attorney drove in. Guys, this is real world, though. I, I mean, th this literally happened, right? So I'm irritated. I'm frustrated. The contractor's, you know, ready to do the project. And... So I called her and she goes, so what's going on today on my way here? She goes, well, what, I don't understand what's going on. I said, Joe, well, what do you mean what's going on? I said, you know we didn't go to settlement because your granddaughter got ugly and decided to yell and scream and curse and call me all kinds of names and get ugly and I don't know why. But I don't play because I'm here to help you. And I want to make a difference in your life, and I want to put that $10,000 in your pocket, but until you get your granddaughter on the same page, my attorney is drafting the documents, my attorney is going to file, and we are going to sue you. Do you think it hurt to tell an 85-year-old woman who I wanted to put $10,000 cash in her hand that I was going to sue her? Yeah. yeah, they're costing me money at this point, and it's not the grandmother, it's the granddaughter. She called me back five more times as I was 50 West now. Ms. Tammy, Ms. Tammy. Miss Tammy, I got a son. I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I stayed calm. Well, right before I pulled into the parking lot, 
we finished a conversation and she said, Shit, her ass will be there. I will make sure that these papers get signed. You have my word on it. I want that money. I'm just smiling. I'm just, I'm just smiling. So they forgot to hang up. Oh. <laughs> and I put myself on mute. So I literally, for 15 minutes, got to hear her talking to her daughter and her son. Mama, this is bullshit. Miss Tammy is right. She's trying to help you. This is so simple. You need to call her up right now and tell her she needs to get here. And I'm, I'm like, I'm starting to laugh, right? Because they don't know I'm on the phone. So I hit mute. And then they're just going on and on. Mommy, you know what you need to do. You know she's here to help you. Well, I, so anyway, finally I think they realized, it was like 18 minutes, they, they clicked the phone off. Next thing I know, I get a text message. 30 seconds later, Miss Tammy, she will be at my house at seven o'clock on Sundays, or, or she will be at my house at seven o'clock on Tuesday to sign the papers. But is that real world real life? Yes. Did I get really excited about a really big profit? Yes. Guys, this, all this stuff kind of happens, but it's, it happens. I was prepared to, I was ready to walk away if I had to, you know? You've got to be willing to make decisions to do things that maybe you don't want to do. You've got to be willing to jump. So, 2000, Olga and I were sitting with a friend and I'm, uh, everybody's pressuring me to write a book. And I just paralyzed because I don't, I don't know where to start. And he said, um, you know, this is, this is really big. Like, this is multiple things that have happened, multiple choices, and really about multi-units. So I'm really, really excited at where 2017 um, is going. And I never felt that, as I said, I was good enough. Um, I, I would sit in Dave Lindahl's workshops up in Braintree, Massachusetts, um, that I could barely afford for $495. And I'd see the $50,000 coaching students and say, I, I mean, I'll never afford that. I, there's no way I can never do that. Um, you know, 200 unit, 100 unit. Like, I, I'm like, I, I guess everybody is right. I guess I am a loser. I guess I'll never amount to anything. I guess I better just stay being a realtor because I'll never be able to do that kind of real estate. And um, I was laying in bed one night, I said, you know, no. Um, why can they, and not I, how am I different than they? I said, what is multi? What, what is multi? What is it? <laughs> it's more than one. And I'm laying there and I said, oh my goodness gracious, if it's more than one, then what's wrong with the duplex? Is that a multi-unit? Yeah. I said, I'm sure I'll be less of a person if I do a two unit versus a 200 unit. But I'd rather have a two unit and have one tenant move out, so I have the other tenant, than have one single family home and have the tenant move out and I'm responsible for the rent. Been there, done that. Okay, that's scary. So I said, so what if I could learn how to do a two unit? The first three unit I, I ever put under contract was uh, 30,000 um, in Baltimore. I was so paralyzed with fear at the fact that it was three units that I, I couldn't compre uh, comprehend it. I, I lost it. Um, all multi is, is more than one. All it is. So. That was just a, a huge um, moment for me. Um, just a little bit, I'm not gonna spend too much time here. This is where I get really emotional. Um, that is my son, uh, Special Forces. Um, he's at NSA right now, he's actually coming out of the military. Um, he's got out of the hospital, um, PTSD. And um, I'm in a different place. That's my daughter. And that's Gemini. That's my wife. So that's why we do um, what we do, to give back, to make a difference. I taught my kids to serve, and they serve. And um, 
that's you know that's what we do. So I just wanted to um, show you who they were, but I'm gonna move on because otherwise I'm gonna keep crying. So as investors, we have these expectations um, of what real estate is, what it's gonna be, and all an expectation is is this perceived value. Um, you become very hopeful of receiving something. You think you're gonna get this big profit, it doesn't end up being what it is. It's always dependent upon these contingent, these hopeful events, and then these expectations are either cemented, you know, for, against, or the occurrence of. This is where a lot of us truly get paralyzed because we cannot um, get past ourselves. So what I know is this, you must define who you are and what you want in life. Tammy, I thought this was about multi-unit. It is. I can show you how to analyze to a cow's come home. If you want to learn how to be a multi-unit investor, you must decide what you want in life. You must know who you are. You must have goals that are strategic, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. You must be willing to take action. You must be willing to sacrifice, and you must be willing to plan. You must know how it's going to affect you, how it's going to affect your family. You must begin with the end in mind. You need to know what you should know, need and will focus your time on, your energy and your resources. You need to write it down, you need to declare it, you need to share it with others. And I say this time and time and time again, and people don't take it seriously, but I want to learn how to analyze, and I want to learn how to do this. Do you guys think for one minute that Adam is excited about that nine unit? Do you think that that one nine unit of Adam doesn't know what he's doing could literally bankrupt him and destroy him if he doesn't have somebody to support him? Yes, I've seen it, okay? It's only $530,000 acquisition, what's the big deal? Which street was that on again? Imagine going <laughs> imagine bankrupt over $530,000 and the rest of your life being affected by that one deal, okay? This is not about the deal and the analyzing and the how-to guys. You've got to define this why. Why are you here tonight? Why? Why, why real estate? Why, why multi-unit? Why single family? What do you want? Because I guarantee you it's not just about the money. Or are you looking for the, the yellow brick road? I get, Jim and I get told all the time, oh my God, you're so lucky. Lucky? Ha! Huh. It's been nothing but adversity and hard work. Nothing, but I wouldn't change it for the world because it has made me who I am and it's made him who he is. You've got to spend time with self-development. You have got to market yourself, your business, for business. How many of you in real estate tonight that are in this room think you are professional marketing or marketing professionals? If you don't have your hand up, you need to put your hand up because as a real estate investor, you are a marketing professional. Because if you don't market yourself through seller credibility, if you don't market for the tenants or the buyers, you don't market the home by staging it to get that highest and best two offers that come in. If you don't market and network to find in a deal in the next opportunity, if you don't market, you will not succeed as a real estate investor. I don't do marketing. Oh yeah, you do. Absolutely, yeah, you do. You've got to understand business and operations. This is not a hobby. You've got to understand acquisitions, negotiations. You've got to understand syndication. You've got to understand raising money. You've got to understand how to deal with asset management. You've got to understand what to do when you walk into one of your units and you find one of your tenants dead. She's been there for three days. How do you deal with that? What do you do at 2.30 in the afternoon when you get a phone call from the sheriff's department and one of your tenants has been shot point blank range in the head? You don't get taught how to deal with that. This is real life, real world. But those tenants, those properties, those assets have now put us at 12 and a half million to live the lifestyle that we want. Is it easy? No. Would I give it up for anything? No. 
Do I need to change a couple things? Yes. But I wouldn't give it up for the world. You have got to decide your why. Owning a multi-unit isn't just owning a multi-unit. Don't forget, those are human beings that live inside. Life happens. They go through divorces. They have children. They have boyfriends that come over and fight and put holes in the walls. They do. They do. Unless you want to own a class A real estate for four or five million down by Alexandria Metro, where you're going to get twenty nine hundred dollars a month and have a high educated, high executive resident that isn't going to do that. Do those types of residents <laughs> exist? They do that too. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've learned, and it has been confirmed for us over and over and over again as I travel the country. Every time I meet with a bank, every time I go to an event, every time I go anywhere, I say to the individual economic development team or the um, Chamber of Commerce, what is your greatest need and demand in this city for housing? What is your greatest need, as I sit here with you in Greensboro, North Carolina today, Mr. Banker, what is your greatest need in Greensboro, North Carolina? What do you think it is? Affordable housing. Affordable housing. Write it down, affordable housing, affordable housing, affordable housing. Everywhere I go, it is the number one issue in our entire country and on a national, global level, internationally, is affordable housing. When I was hit by a drunk driver and I lost everything and I was paralyzed and it took me four years to learn to walk all over again. I was angry at God. I didn't know why and what had happened as a single mom. But I knew he saved my life and I had a reason. Today I can stand here and tell you that my ministry is to provide affordable housing that is clean, safe, and affordable where people can come and know that it is family oriented, where we have fun, the kids have fun, the parents have fun. I do financial literacy, I do financial counseling, I sit at my office, I do budgets, I teach people how I want to be treated, how to teach me as a property owner. Guys, this isn't rocket science. This is learning to do real estate, not the way they teach it out there. This is learning to do real estate from what comes right here. How do you want to be treated? Then turn around and treat the others that way. That's why all of our units are occupied. That's why we're doing what we're doing. I'm blessed. It's awesome. You have a question? Somebody? Frank, you had your hand up? Oh, no, I was scratching my head. Okay. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so, I'm not going to go into self-development. Pay it forward. Give it back. Make a difference. Touch someone. That's all it is. I wanted to share this. I just felt this was powerful. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. But mastering yourself is the ultimate power. And when you know why you're here and why you're doing what you're doing, none of the other stuff matters. I'm going to skip through some of this because we'll go into it on the four, on, on August uh, 5th and 6th. We're going to take two solid days. Uh, one day at the Greenbelt um, Marriott. The next day I'm bringing in two luxury charter buses. And um, we will pick everybody up. And you're going to go see um, apartment building. You're going to see a small multi-unit. You're also going to see an assisted living. And you're going to get out into the field and you're going to touch, see, and feel what it takes to do a small multi-unit acquisition, stabilization, reposition. Um, I do have a couple guest speakers that are going to be coming in to share, part of my team. So that's going to be August 5th and August 6th. It's a two-day event um, and it's going to be really exciting. But business is business. Again, like I said, business versus hobby. Your credibility portfolio. I don't want to spend too too much time on this. So now is the crossroads of investors. Igor came up here and said, "I've done 85. It's not really a big deal." You look and go, "Oh my gosh, that's a lot of homes," and it is a lot of homes. Um, but if Igor quit doing single-family homes, and something were to happen to him physically, or he couldn't market anymore, or let's just say that. Um, he was in his 60s and you know wanted to slow down. Would he still have cash or cash flow? Cash. 
cash. The big checks. Guess what Jim and I have? Cash flow. We have cash flow. Yep. Cash flow is king. I heard it yesterday from the president of the bank. Everything. Show me the money. Cash flow is everything. It is everything. It means more than a $50,000 check. They'd rather see $4,000 a month in cash flow than a $50,000 check. Because it's the consistency of it. But you can do both. You can go seek out a small multi-unit and every now and then pick up a, um, a single family to flip. Not a problem, not a problem. Cash flow is king, right? We have bonds, we have bills, we have stock market, or we have multi-unit real estate. And I will tell you right now, this is all about specialization and focus niches. This assisted living has flipped my lid. It is one roof, under 5,000 square foot. It is 15 beds, 10 baths. And when it is 100% occupied, it will grow $72,000 a month, under one roof. One single family home, 775,000 a year gross, 400,000 plus net, 15 beds. I didn't say bedrooms, I didn't say units, I said beds. 5,500 to 6,500 a month per bed. Where are the baby boomers? What are they doing? Where are they going? What do they need to be? How many of you just heard the news? The local lady from Prince George's County who went on vacation today, five o'clock news. I was getting ready in the hotel. Two months ago, three months ago, went on a cruise to um, Alaska, had a major medical crisis, could not get back to Prince George's County, and um, they didn't know if she was gonna make it. Her health insurance getting ready to cut her off in order to transport her back to Prince George's County, it's gonna cost $70,000, I believe they said, to medically transport her back. Insurance will not pay for it. Um, the church up in Alaska created a GoFundMe account and they were able to raise enough money to send this stranger home. Um, <clears throat> she's going to an assisted living right here in uh, Prince George's County. Guys, this isn't a what we think is, the baby boomers are living a lot longer. Do you want your mom and dad in a skilled nursing home where they don't care? I'm not saying all nursing homes don't care. Or do you wanna go visit your mom and dad where they're sitting on the front porch, where they're in a home, where they're being taken care of, where their activities of daily life are being taken care of, they're independent, so on and so forth. I have completely shifted so much that I shared it with my husband and I said, Jim, I said, if we reposition and stabilize all these big, huge properties that we have, do you know that we could buy two or three assisted livings and be set for the rest of our life. Two or three, I like two. I get it, I get it. I'm watching, I watch the market like a hawk. So this is the decade of the entrepreneurial millionaires. It's the same decade of entrepreneurial millionaires that happened in the decade after the Great Depression. This is a cycle, it's an economic cycle. It happens every 80 years, it happens every 40 years. That's where we're at. There are four seasons of an economy cycle. So I just said, what happened 80 years ago? The Great Depression. What did we just have 80 years later? <coughs> the Great Recession, right? You have a 40-year generational cycle. You have an 80-year new economy cycle. You have spending and productivity cycles. Then there's these things called demographic migra migration cycles. Why do elderly go like this and down south to Texas and Florida? Why? What else? I'm going to tell you, I know right now, the last two winters physically, I get the pain and the cold. I get it. I'm feeling it in my body from all the surgeries and the broken bones. I now understand what a demographic migration shift is. This is real. This is legit. Okay? Kids are coming out of college. Can they afford to live in D.C.? What 21-year-old child without mom and dad's help is gonna pay $3,800 a month for Capitol Hill? It can't happen. 
Where do they go? It's called a demographic migration shift. You've got to watch these markets. That's why High Point University, High Point, Greensboro, North Carolina, it's like, what's why it's so amazing. This is why Baltimore is the number two market in the entire country. How many universities are in Baltimore, guys? A lot. <laughs> Johns Hopkins University is infiltrating billions. <clears throat> University of Maryland, billions. You can literally see the cranes, see the cities. We just did a huge analyzing class, estimating class. I said, guys, pay attention to the number of cranes that are out down there. This president of this bank that I was on the phone with for an hour spoke at the NAACP yesterday at the Baltimore Convention Center. All of these other areas are coming to Baltimore to learn how Baltimore is doing this revitalization. Why would in the world would you go to DC, and God love DC, <laughs> but I'm serious. I'm about real, as an investor, not a homeowner, as an investor, why in the world would you go to D.C. and pay $500,000 for one home when you can go to Baltimore, which is number two in the country as a property owner, and buy a two unit for $30,000, put $60,000 into it, turn around and refi it with a local credit union, and get $2,800 a month for it? Do the math on that ROI. D.C. can't touch this. I don't want to spend 18 months doing a million dollar condo conversion. No, you do it. I don't care. I'll buy a Baltimore all day long. Triple digit ROI is going on there, guys. Everybody wants to do DC. DC. Oh, it's DC. <laughs> DC doesn't give me a rate of return. Plus, DC is 80% tenant owned. Because you have Topa. got to understand these market cycles. I'm a rehabber, I'm a rehabber, I'm a flipper, I'm a flipper, but I can't understand why I can't buy a house. I'm getting bid out of every top of everything. And there's all these, all, all these offers. I said, have you ever stopped to think that the market shifted? You're in the wrong cycle? This ain't the time to be flipping right now, unless you buy right. Just like markets change, we have to change too. But if you don't have your pulse on the market, you don't know what's going on in the market, you're gonna get stuck. That's what happened in 2006, 2007, 25-30% appreciation. I knew something was gonna happen, but I didn't know what it was. I watched so many friends lose everything. They were banking on that 25%. They used their properties as ATM machines. Cash flow, cash flow, over leverage, over leverage, to cash out, refi, cash out, refi. BS, we are 50% LTV, 55% max on every single one of our properties. We have plenty of equity. We sailed right through. I own a 2010 Nissan Altima with 246,000 miles on it. I live below my means, and when the market shifts, I'm fine. But if you want the BMWs, and you want the Michael Kors purses, and you want the big houses, and you want to be over leveraged, you're not going to survive in this market. And then you wonder why this real estate stuff doesn't work. Sorry to bust your bubble. But I'm out there, I see it, I felt it, I read it, I do it, and I know it works. And yes, I'm passionate about it because I'm sick and tired of watching you guys get hurt and watch you guys fail and wonder why this business doesn't work. I know why. I'm out there every day, I see it. Does this make sense? Yes. You guys want to succeed? Yes. You want to know what's really working? Yes. Yeah, when, when we say stop flipping, stop flipping, seriously. Stop. You're going to get hurt. Because it's not about who wins at the auction to pay the most. Because now, guess what? You just overpaid. Yeah, but I had to get the bid. No, you didn't. Why? Yeah, but I had to win. <laughs> and pay a 10% buyer premium. Woohoo! Good for you. That was smart. Mm -mm. No way, buddy. No way. This is what a market cycle looks like. Where are we right now, today? Metro, 495, inside Beltway, outside the Beltway, DC, where are we? SM2. SM2. We're in between SM1 and 2. I heard SM1, SM2, where are we? In between SM2. 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 Is there a right answer or a wrong answer? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Do you think in Maryland, DC, and Virginia, there are sub-markets? 
Do you think Hagerstown, Maryland is different than Manassas, Woodridge? Do you think that Baltimore City is different than Capitol Hill? But is that not local? Yeah. So what is it? This is why you must know your markets. I'm not saying you have to be spot on, but where are we? You've got to know what's going to happen. Where's it going? What's getting ready? To, what's getting ready? Guys, what happened in 2005, four or five, that was going on in DC? What happened? Condo conversion, condo conversion, condo conversion. 25%, 25%, 30%, multiple contracts, 25,000 over asking, 25,000 over asking. Bam, we tipped. Do you guys realize we're right there again? Didn't I just say the market's down by 0.6? It is. It is. We get ready to tip again. But is it going to be as much this time? No. Everybody's like DC, DC, kind of conversion, kind of conversion, kind of conversion. Yeah, look at look at the reports right now. The market is down. It is down a hair. And it's gonna keep sliding down, but we gotta watch it because it might be down just a hair because it's summer. Okay, but that's that's what we gotta watch. So if you're buying up five hundred thousand dollar properties in DC and you think you're gonna put you know five hundred thousand into it and get one point two out of each. What are you going to do if the market tips and you're left holding the bag? Hard money, 12% on 1.2 million. Ha, you're gone. Come play in Baltimore, friends. <laughs> Come play. This makes sense? Okay, so after the economy totally tanked, but again, it depends on the market. Not all of DC is SM2 right now. And that doesn't mean literally don't buy. It means be careful. Don't buy in DC, be careful. Watch the market. But if a really good deal passes up or shows up, well, Tammy said not to take it. No, I said be careful. If it's a good deal and the numbers work, take it. You can get a hundred thousand dollar property and it's worth eight hundred thousand and it only needs one hundred fifty. Take it, but don't step too far out of your comfort zone. And I'm telling you, you're going to tip. I'm, I'm watching it. I'm seeing it. So where do we buy? We buy in the middle. This is the best place right here. That's why we did so well because we bought no one else would. We bought all. We bought up. Call us vulture buyers. We stand on the sidelines. I didn't know what I was. <laughs> we stand on the sidelines and we literally swoop down when the market uh, shifts and pick up uh, once we know it's a bottom. And then we ride the appreciation up. We say, oh my God, you're so lucky. Yeah, a lot of it was luck, but I had no clue what was going on. Remember, school needed me, I didn't need it. But this is literally what the, the market is. And you know, I'm not saying you have to get fanatical in this, but it's just really nice to know, right? You've got to understand acquisitions and negotiations, but this is what paralyzes everybody. There's six fears. Don't tell me it's not fear, because you're lying. It is fear in all of us. It's either fear of the unknown, fear of rejection, fear of losing, fear of success, fear of the unknown, or fear of abandonment, or fear of failure. That's what stops you. You're the only one that stops you. You're the only one that gets in your way. It is one of those six fears. But this is how I feel. Just feel fear and forge on, right? Push through it. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. My clicker got broke. I know you guys wanted to see that stuff and all that other national fancy stuff, speakers, show. I do have rent rolls, pro formas. We have budgets, letters of intents. I have all that. We use all that. Those are tools. That's not why we do all tell you. There's a big difference. I'm not going to sell you on all the latest software gadgets. Analyze multi unit. I don't know how to use that software. I use a very simple Excel spreadsheet called Microsoft Office, and it works very well. <laughs> and I know what my cap rate is, and I know what my cash on cash is, and I know what my rent rolls are, and I can see them all the way across. I know exactly what's going on. So we don't need all that craziness to be able to do what we do. Simple is best. You've got to know your sweet spots. 
I've been saying this all evening. You've got to know your market. Oh, Tammy, I found this amazing 38 unit down in Tyler, Texas, <laughs> or Waco, Texas. Wow, tell me about it. Well, it's only 20% occupied. Oh. Okay, well, for the right price, that's value add. Maybe not be too bad. Yeah, but it's only a city of 200,000. <laughs> Do you think you're gonna struggle if you go to a really, really, really small town and <laughs> you buy a property, but it was a really, really, really good deal. It was a really, really, really good price. Everybody started jumping up into Fargo, North, Cal uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and South Dakota, <laughs> and some areas in Pennsylvania because of what? Fracking. Fracking. Right, all the all the contractors, the all the all the guys that have been, you know, traveling, you know, leaving their families for several months at a time, you know, you see these spikes in real estate, you know, because they're buying up properties and rental and stuff. But what happens when that fracking or all that is up and then everybody well, leaves for them? Right? It's it's you, you you really you've got to know your market. You know, it, it's driven by the three majors and that's Employment is your number one driving force. University and healthcare in every market. Is it a, an emerging market? Is it a declining market? Is it a stabilized market? And if it is, what kind of a stabilized market is it? You've got to be able to understand what it is that the market is dictating. Are they millennials in the end product? Are they older and they're retiring? Are they, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s and employed? What is it? You know, are these first time home buyers that have good cash, they're looking to buy homes? Or did the whole entire factory just shut down because the United States decided to ship everything in High Point, Thomasville, North Carolina over to Asia and everybody in Thomasville and High Point, North Carolina lost all their jobs in the factories. I shut the housing market down. How do I know my parents live there? But I watched it. Like that. Cities wiped out. Look at Detroit. Right? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but I go to Detroit buy a house for two thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Good luck. Good luck yeah, putting twenty, 20 grand into, into it and it. selling yeah. it for four. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're trying to sell it for the next six years. And I don't need to read through all this, right? But you've got to have your resources, your must-have tools. You've got to understand private money, closing budgets, hiring general contractors, Section 8. Um, you know, understand how property renovations on a multi-unit. How do you do a renovation on a multi-unit? We're getting ready to break ground on five units. You know, we're getting ready to break ground on 15 beds. You know, how do you manage that? How do you, you do that? Um, we've been stepped on, we've been lied to, we've been embezzled, we've been taken advantage of, but each time I learn my lesson and I have to say, okay, Jim, what is it that we can learn from this so that it doesn't happen again? Um, and usually he's the one that's always right. He says, well, I told you, but you got really excited, because I do, I'm emotional, I get excited. And normally he's always right. He said, I'm not trying to say I told you so, but I'm telling you, I didn't get a good feeling about it, and we you know, probably should have done this or, or done that. Um, but he lets me fail and uh, picks me up, brushes the dirt off. So you gotta know what your strategies are. You gotta know what your action plans are in case the market does shift. I had some old timers tell me uh, many, many, many years ago, do not hold all of your assets in one market. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, do not hold all of your assets in one market. And then on top of that, do not hold all of the same tenant in a building. Diversify. Diversify your asset, diversify your portfolio, diversify your market, and diversify your tenant. I'll go more into that on the fifth and the sixth. I took that to heart and I thank God every day that we did that. This is powerful, I live by this. Many investors don't understand this. It's not about stepping over a dollar to get to a dime. This is a relationship-driven business. And a relationship is not something that you pursue to see how much profit you're gonna get. 
It's what happens to you when you are immersed in serving the lives and the things of others. And it's pretty cool. Those see it as amazing. That actually is our Malone community, Hilltop Mobile States, 84 units, gross effective income, 204 a year, expenses 94, NOI 109. Um, where are we at now? Year 5, 303. Um, I haven't been able to put as much time and attention into that property because it is six hours away and it has been affected. My NOI is not <coughs> where I want it to be. But that's because I haven't been there to take care of it. Okay? But is it still giving us the, the NOI that we need? Yes. Are bills being paid? Yes. But I now, Jim and I literally this morning, he said, Tammy, I've got everything up here. You need to go down there for whatever, seven to 10 days. You need to get your arms back around this before it goes too down. So I'm not perfect. I'm so focused on what's going up here. This one's been churning cash for eight years and doing just fine. But what happened in November of last year? We had a presidential election, do we not? I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, what happened? Did we shift from Democratic to Republican? Did it fear, did it put the fear into um, people, okay? Did it excite others? Yeah. Yes, okay? What if I told you that that community is 85% illegal, Hispanic, Guatemalan, Mexican, and Honduran residents? Who came into presidency? I need to put up my own wall because I'm having an exodus. <laughs> because they're terrified. But see, I learned about ICE. And I spent time with ICE. And I came to understand what it means to come to this great country of ours in pursuit of a better life. And I now respect and understand why eight and ten grown men live in one home with mattresses on the floor where before it would piss me off and I would get mad at him and I would evict him. Why? Because they send 85% of their checks back to their families so their families can eat. They're the hardest working. All of our rent is paid by the fifth of the month in that community. They're terrified of being deported. I've lost two to deportation. I've lost two. Okay? They don't play no more. They don't. They don't play no more. Okay? Alcohol and, and a bad fight. Um, they, they were deported back. I didn't speak the language. I still don't speak the language, but now they just laugh at me. <laughs> it, took two, it took two years for me to build a relationship. That's the other thing I learned about real estate and investors that you don't get is that that community right there is a totally different community than our mobile home park in Fort Mitchell, Alabama. This mobile home park is totally different than this mobile home park, which is totally different than our apartment building, which is in inner city Baltimore, which is totally different than our mobile home communities that are down on the Eastern Shore, which is totally different than the culture and the community that is in Pikesville, Maryland. If you don't know your culture, and you don't know the client and the tenant that you are living with, they will run you off like a hot potato. I know what matters in Hilltop Mobile Estates. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it does not matter in Baltimore City. They are illegal. I know what matters. I know that I have to turn a blind eye, that they have to switch a tag on a vehicle so they can freaking get to work. I get it, I understand. I understand they have to pay their rent in cash sometimes. I understand now because I immersed myself into that culture and I now know what it takes. But I'll tell you what, 100% of the rent roll, for the most part, is sitting in the Dropbox in the last five years because I went the extra effort to understand them. They now invite me into their home. See him up in Baltimore, they love Jim. Jim's from Pittsburgh, by the way. How do you think he fares well in Reagan's territory? <laughs> and I've learned my Steelers. <laughs> they they have so much fun. Right on, we've brother. learned we've learned the culture, right? We've learned what's fun. You know, I can go up to Baltimore and, and our building's on the west side and it always wasn't perfect. 
but I literally can go up there and do whatever I need to do and I'm not worried. I've never felt worried. It's not been an issue, but there isn't anything that they won't do for my husband and I. You know, I love being down on the Eastern Shore. You want to talk about redneck? Yeah, we're going to get down and get redneck because it's chicken farmers and it's watermen and, you know, and, and suspenders. No, I'm serious. It is. And dirty fingernails. But I get that culture, so I don't come out of Salisbury dressed like this. I got dressed like this upstairs. When I'm down in Salisbury, my hair is pulled back in my baseball hat, and I fit in. I don't put my makeup on. I know, I know what we need to do. I don't overstep my bounds. I don't drive up in an $800,000 Bentley or an $85,000 BMW. I'm right there with my people. And if you be with your people, your people will always be with you. Oh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I love what we do. It's another mobile home community. I take a bunch of my students on site, get them into it. That, I mean, that was in Baltimore. That's part of due diligence. Um, Adam, due diligence is everything. I am a due diligence fanatic. I know across the country for due diligence. In fact, I'd love to share this with you because it, I have the pinch. Because it's hard to believe um, that yesterday I was nominated for 2017 Commercial Real Estate Investor of the Year. Why my, my husband doesn't even know it yet. Um, I got like <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta, I just got the email. I got to fill out the paperwork. Um, but they're going to fly us down to Atlanta. And I've already been told um, today I was really high up in the running. And that's not what this is about. But it's nice to be recognized for making a difference. You know? Um, do we need money to live? Yeah. I mean, we do. We do. We, we've got a rent roll. I have 58,000 in mortgages a month that I have to write out. Um, but I don't ever forget where I came from because 28 years ago, I was in an abused women's homeless shelter in Rockville, Maryland. And uh, eight years later, I was on the board of that same shelter. That's a whole part of my life I, I don't talk about. Um, so it's really cool to go from having been in a shelter to being on the board of a shelter. Um, he was playing as long before him. Huh? <laughs> 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 what? He was playing as long, long, long before him. He said it wasn't him. He didn't do it. He wouldn't be here if he was doing it. <laughs> um, it. It's just fun. We, um, on this visit, it was November. And I went down to Food Lion and bought 85 turkeys. Um, and my students helped me deliver turkeys um, for Thanksgiving uh, for all the residents. Uh, Tanya, actually, who's up there in the blue, she, we didn't know she was ill at the time. She actually passed away uh, the very next year. She had a 10 unit under contract. Um, guys, understanding what's safe, what's average, what's risky. You know, I, I'm, I don't even know what time it is. Um, I really, I don't, I have no clue what time it is right now. Oh, we are way over. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna boot scoot through here. August 5th and August 6th. If I could do it totally for free, I would, but I can't. I have a huge hotel room, I have a huge charter bus. I'm trying to keep it as fair and minimal as I can, but it's a two day workshop. I'm not a national speaker. I'm gonna give you two days of everything that I have, just like I did tonight, to teach you more of the how, right? How, how, tonight was the why, but we're gonna get down into the nitty gritty. You're gonna see the Excel spreadsheet, the pro formas, all that kind of stuff. Guys, this is very limited. This was last year. That is the assisted living up there, by the way. That's what it looks like. Um, we sold out last year, so it, it, it has to be limited. I'm, I'm only me. And I, my husband is only him, and I can't, you know, there's only so many seats on the bus. 67 per person. Um, we are going to do a VIP dinner. I'm going to limit that to 25. Um, 25 VIP, so we'll have a special dinner, happy hour, networking, you know, hanging out, you know, front row seats, all that kind of fun stuff. That's 97 per person. I'm not selling anything. This is an opportunity for full immersion. If you are interested, I know we are, I believe 22 seats are already sold. Well, we didn't even market it, it's just on Meetup. Um, if you go online right now, um, Olga said, Tammy, those prices are way too low. I said, well, tough. 
um, that's what I feel I want to do tonight. I feel that's, you know, very fair. I don't think that's too much to ask um, to get two full days. So like I said, VIP is um, 97 plus. I'm going to give you one of my analyzers um, to help you guys get started. So it's Saturday, August 5th, we will start promptly at 8 a.m. We will go to 7.30 p.m. VIP will go to 7.30 p.m. Um, for happy hour networking and all of that. The rest of the event will end at 5.30. On Sunday, if you are not at the hotel at 8 o'clock a.m., you will be left behind. Two luxury charter buses will be there to pick us up and we are promptly going on site. Lunch will be provided and my GC is gonna leave one of the buses. I and Jim will leave one of the buses and then we will flip and rotate so you can learn about GC, hiring GCs, GC contractors. I was on the phone today an hour with Karim. Um, we're updating all the contractor documents to make them even better. There's 11 contractor documents you need to use when you hire a contractor. Um, I mean, how cool would it be to have like a, a list of interview questions to interview a contractor? Sure. Isn't that cool? And I actually had someone ask me one time, and I, she was like, how, how, how would I interview them? And I was like, I just do it. I, I don't know. She goes, do you mind if I record you? And I said, sure. So literally, we took those questions and wrote them down. So now we have a, um, uh, like a, a script, I guess, if you would, um, for um, interviewing um, contractors. But if you want to join us on the 5th and 6th, the girls are ready, and John and Jim are at, ready at the back table for you. Um, so just go ahead, you know, get registered for the weekend. Once it's sold out, guys, it's sold out, it's the bus. Uh, once I'm done, I'm done. And, um, then what we are going to do is my team and I are still talking about a couple of fun little things um, that I may be adding in there. So there may be some more uh, fun things uh, that we, you know, bring along. I'd love for you to join us. And I'm going to leave you with this. So tomorrow you will be more disappointed than today, guaranteed, by all the things you didn't do than by all the ones you did do. So pull up your anchors, sail away from the safe harbor you sit in, allow the winds to catch in your sails, take action, explore, dream, discover, join me in Baltimore in achieving true financial freedom. I look forward to seeing you guys at Joe Theismann's. If anybody has any questions, I'm here, and I hope to see everyone on July 5th and July 6th. Thank you. Okay.